first few years of my company was we were only six to eight dancers. So it sort of wouldn't have occurred to me to um, I've thought about doing those pieces, yeah. you know. It was a commission actually to do Nutcracker with Opera North um, uh, in 1992. It just came to me out of the blue as a surprise. And I, they, I thought, oh, really? You know, what an interesting idea. And I, I thought, yeah, you know, I'd love to do that actually. I'd love to do that, have a pe piece of a music that was written to tell a story, which the Tchaikovsky mm. pieces were. Because the stories are quite simple, really. So you can be really, you can you can create your own story within the framework. That was the thing I found exciting. It's virtually been with me the whole of my career now is, is taking things, much loved things, and doing something a bit different with them. Mm. Even the musicals that I've done, uh, Mary Poppins and My Fair Lady and Oliver, you know, they're all pieces that people love. Yeah. I guess if I'm looking at it from an audience point of view, you still have to um, please the people who already know the piece because they've come to it for a reason as well. And it may be the music that's the important thing, or it may be you know, the story, but you've, you've still got to uh, think, bear that in mind. So it's, it's, a, it's walking a tightrope between being innovative and being uh, true to the piece. So it's 24 years this year since we first did it, and, and um, uh, over that time it's, it's evolved quite a lot. We don't do it all the time, we do it about every four or five years. Um, and, but just recently we've had the chance to redesign the whole thing, remake it, um, have new lighting design and some new choreography and lots of new aspects to it, uh, which has been the biggest change we've done, you know, since it first premiered. Unusually, um, for a choreographer, most of the choreographers that I know like to do new work all the time. I, I love doing new work, but I also love reviving pieces because you can always make them better. And you come, you come at them with the knowledge of audience reaction, what audiences have, have told you. And I don't think many people listen to the audience enough, you know, in their creation of a piece. Uh, it's, it, you don't just make it and then throw it out there and disappear. Mm. You make it, then you sit there with an audience and you listen to what, how the audience reacts. And that tells you how you could do better sometimes. Mm. Things have changed in, since we first did Swan Lake 2. Now, when we first did it, we had uh, walkouts, uh, when the prince and the swan danced together, we had particularly men used to get, get up and walk out. Mothers take, uh, taking their young girls out of the theatre, things like that, you know, <laughs> when we first did it. Um, it wasn't the Swan Lake they were expecting to see. Mm. Uh, there was some controversy around that. Um, and some misunderstanding of what the what the piece was really about in a way 20 something years later it's uh, things have changed massively and it's become you know has become a bring the family Christmas show at Sadler's mm. Wells in London you know you see people bringing their kids because it basically it's a it's a, a piece about um, acceptance and and being being able to love the person you want to love at the heart of it, I think the reason Swan Lake in particular is so successful is because it is, is a little bit more basic than that. It's about a, a, a lost soul who needs to be hugged. Mm. That's really what it comes down to. <laughs> and everyone gets that and identifies with it, you know. Uh, I think that's been the, the, one of the things that's made it very successful. But you know, there are so many more things, that's types of relationships mm. that we can represent on our stages. And in dance, it is a bit slow to yeah. say to deal with that. I try and um, more and more, even if the, the central story I'm telling is um, involving a male-female relationship, I'm trying to get other you know, gay relationships within mm. the story somewhere. Uh, even if there's a secondary story or it's happening there in that scene. And I'm doing a new production of Romeo and Juliet. And it is Romeo is a boy and Juliet mm. is a girl. But within the world of that, we've got all sorts of other relationships mm. going on. It can't change instantly always because it needs to start at the, the level of inspiration for young people who need to see people, it's, it's a catch-22, they need mm. to see people on stage that represent them, that look like them, to know that as a young person that I, that I can be that, I can be that person. Uh, if they don't see it, they don't think it. That's how you begin and then, 
what you can't do is bypass the training part of it because people need to be highly trained and high and, and skilled to be able to get into these companies so there needs to be often you can say oh it's a it's not a very diverse looking company but then you you come to the audition process and you've got no one to choose from you know you so it's it has to start at the uh, at the beginnings and it starts with inspiration, it starts with role models. In some ways, you've got to be the trailblazers, you've got to do it yourself a little bit. You can't wait for someone else to ask you to do, you know, you've got to create work or find people who want to create work on you. I think at the moment, you need to work harder in making those things happen. So you have to sort of have the initiative to, to get it off the ground. Mm -hmm. I was talking to um, uh, Will Young oh. uh, recently. And he came to see Swan Lake, and he uh, he'd seen it years ago. And he said, "Oh, it reminds me, you you actually quite out there earlier on." I said, "Well, yeah, I think I was." But doing this piece, and I've always in my work, and for 30 years ago, I've I've represented gay relationships in my work. And he said, "Oh, you were actually quite a trailblazer, weren't you?" I said, "Well, nobody really talks about me in that way now." Um, but I just did it because it was a, a part of my life. A big part of my life and it just and also a lot of the people I was working with so it just seemed a natural thing to do and if you're an artist and you don't represent who you are you're not really a proper artist if you know I think it's gonna come from you